It was my dark night of the soul. It was a rainy Saturday in February 2009, and I was on an emergency phone call. I was sitting on the couch in my living room, my head down, concentrating and doing my best to facilitate a conversation between individuals from very different worlds. MEMA, the trade association for the manufacturers of all the parts that make up your car, the brake pad industry, local government, and the Sierra Club. A senior brake pad executive dropped the bomb. He said, we simply will not commit to that date until we know we can meet it. The date was everything we had been working for to solve the environmental problem for the past 12 years. The date was the whole point. The Sierra Club representative responded, that goes against everything we've agreed to. The tension on the phone was palpable. The phone call ended. I hung up. Um, over 12 years of hard work building an unlikely partnership to solve a challenging environmental problem was about to fall apart. And if it did, it would be like a stake through my heart. Was everything I believed in the power of collaboration wrong? Since the mid-1990s, my organization, Sustainable Conservation, had been leading a first-of-its-kind alliance to address the issue of copper in brake pads. Every time you hit your brakes, a little bit of dust comes off, lands on the road to be washed by rain into nearby streams, rivers, lakes, and San Francisco Bay. You might think that's no big deal until you realize that there are millions of cars on the road and everybody hits their brakes hundreds of times every day. Copper is in that dust, and copper is toxic to phytoplankton, which forms the base of the marine food chain. Talk, uh, copper also interferes with the sensory perceptions of salmon and disables their ability to detect, detect predators and find their way back to their spawning grounds. In the mid-1990s, the science was really not clear on how significant a contributor copper and brake pads was to the high levels of copper in our waters. The traditional approach to solving this problem would have been a lawsuit, with the environmental community on one side and the industry on the other, each hiring their own scientists and duking it out in court. Sustainable conservation believes there is a better way. We believe you can collaborate with the private sector to find environmental solutions that work economically, and as a result, are more enduring and can have a greater impact. We convinced these unlikely bedfellows, the brake pad industry, city government, and the Sierra Club to come together and work with us. Sustainable conservation led and facilitated the process, and together we guided the science that needed to be done. When the science indicated that 60% of the copper in stormwater runoff was from brake pads, everybody was bought in. So we turned our attention to, to how to address the 60%. And it was the brake pad industry that recommended that our coalition introduce legislation to California to phase copper out of brake pads. We spent the next year working out the details and introduced legislation in January 2008. Then the firestorm hit. For the past 12 years, we had been working with the brake pad industry trade association. Then the recession hit. That trade association closed its doors, and MEMA, the trade association for all auto parts manufacturers, took over and on the phone call I described, wanted to start over. At this point, we were in year 13 of the effort. Trust was severely eroded. The Sierra Club was ready to walk and file a lawsuit. As the facilitator and the honest broker in the process, I had to go out and remind people why it was in their enlightened self-interest to stay at the table continue and continue negotiating. The California legislature staff began to joke that our name should not be sustainable conservation, but that it should be sustainable conversation. <laughs> this story has a happy ending. The brake pad legislation with firm deadlines, the date, uh, passed with overwhelming bipartisan support and the support of the brake pad industry, the auto industry, city government, and the environmental community, something unheard of in Sacramento for major environmental legislation. Through our sustainable conversations, we crafted provisions that gave industry the time it needed, but also provided firm deadlines and targets for cities and environmentalists. Environmental problems are complex and hard to solve, but they're worth the effort. Because California is 12% of the car market, the industry will reformulate not just for California, but for all of North America. This legislation will lead to cleaner waters across the country. Environmental problems take time to solve, and we really need different disciplines, including business, to come to the table and to forge workable solutions. 
I urge you to get involved in solving environmental problems connected to your businesses by reaching out to others who know and care about the problem and forging these solutions. There will be more dark nights of the soul, but there will also be bright, hopeful dawns. Several of the brake pad engineers uh, we worked with told me that our collective effort had been one of the high points of their career. We all need to keep engaging because business has an essential role to play in finding environmental solutions that make economic sense.